climax. The last stop before the title game. It's Montana and Georgia Southern. Welcome you all to Statesboro, Georgia, where this morning in the pouring down rain, the University of Montana Grizzlies in their quest to bring the national title back to the big sky face their toughest challenge to date as they take on the number one ranked Georgia Southern Eagles. Hello everybody, my name is Dave Tester and along with Bob Hermes we'll be bringing you all the exciting play-by-play -play action of this semifinal Division I AA playoff game. Bob, this is a matchup of the number one defense in America, the University of Montana going up against the number one rushing offense in Georgia Southern. It's got to give somewhere. Dave, it should be a real interesting game. I think the key for the Grizzlies is to be to uh, stop Georgia with their defense. They're going to have to stop them from scoring, and Georgia, you know, loves to run. They love to run that flex bone. So if the Grizzlies can concentrate on that, I think they'll have a good opportunity to stay in the game. I also think they need to keep it close in the first half. If they can do that, I think they can win here today. You might want to point out that Georgia Southern's number one running back, Joe Ross, probably won't play today because of a knee injury. That could play a part in how well they fare on the ground. For the University of Montana, when they have the football, Brady Bennett's got to come out hot and in a hurry to keep the offense rolling and in turn keep the ball away from Georgia Southern. Well, I know Georgia Southern very concerned about Montana's pass, and uh, I know they've actually dropped an extra defensive back into coverage on every down. That's not normal for them, so they've had to make some adjustments coming into the game even before the opening kickoff. Did you bring your warm clothes, I hope, for this one? Well, everybody said, go down to Georgia. It's wonderful this time of year, and I'll tell you, Missoula is a lot warmer than it is here in the last two days. All right. Well, you've got the best seat in the house, the University of Montana, taking on Georgia Southern. We'll have the kickoff right after this. Well, we're back and ready for the action. As far as the coin flip goes, Georgia Southern won the toss. They deferred it to the University of Montana, so the Grizzlies will receive. You can see the conditions, and Bob, as we mentioned in the open of the show, it is cold and it is rainy. It's damp out, but I think the field, the traction will hold out for both teams. Dave, the field felt good. We were out there walking out a little bit. I think the field's in really good shape considering the conditions, and it this be a, should be a great game. We might want to point out they actually played a football game here during Hurricane Hugo, and they didn't have any trouble. The kickoff goes deep to Shannon Kabanach. Kabanach has an open avenue and pushes it up to the 26-yard line, and that's where the University of Montana will operate, and that's a key for the Grizzlies' field position in this contest. Eagles very, very uh, confident, Dave, going into the game. The whole city and town, of course, they've won 35 straight here, and you can understand why they are so confident and if the Grizzlies can move the ball here even if they don't score but get a couple first downs and move the ball I think it'll it'll help set the tone that offensive line one of the best in the big sky extremely tough we'll take a look at the rest as Grady Bennett operates from his own 28 this is the first play from scrimmage semifinal playoff action Montana Georgia Southern Bennett on a roll will go back to Mike Trevathan who gathers it in and will get it out to the 29 yard line but I like the way they've added that screen, Dave. You know, the Grizzlies have ran that middle screen all year long, but one nice thing that they've done is they've got Grady turning around on it. That's a new twist. It didn't work too well there, but I think it's a good play to open with, try to get a completion. The Georgia Southern faithful, they have not seen their Eagles lose on this field in 35 straight games. They would like to make it 36. Grady Bennett will go from the shotgun. That's Jody Farmer to the top of your screen. Bennett on second and nine is going to go down. Dave, that's exactly what we can't have happen to the Grizzlies. They're going to come after him, and uh, the key will be to contain that defensive front. Giff Smith, one of the best around, picks up sack number 10 on the year. He's the all-time sack leader, set a record this year with 22. Keep your eye on number 95 coming in on Grady Bennett. Again, just the front wall there, they did a pretty good job initially. Grady had to take a little more time, and I guess you'll have to credit the Eagles secondary there with good coverage. Third down and 12 for the Kalispell native and the University of Montana. Montana in the trip formation. Bennett looking and goes down, and this crowd goes wild. This path, a right tackle. 
Grady down. It looks like Bennett's going to have the time, but that could have been what you want to call a coverage sack there. Actually, Dave, you got to give credit to the Eagles' defense, uh, the secondary. They were able to contain our, our receivers, and Grady just didn't have – he had a lot of time. And he checked once, went to his second and third receiver, and still couldn't find anybody. Jody Farmer, who is the third best in the nation, will punt it off. Back to receive. Is oh, it's blocked. It's blocked. Oh, that's not good, Dave. Touchdown, Eagles. We knew that they like to come hard on these uh, punts just like we do, and they, they got that one. Paul Sickley with the block. And just like that, the University of Montana is down 6-0. And I believe, is that the first block of the year? On the University of Montana, it is the first block. Dave Guffey tells me it's the first time the University of Montana has a has had a pop, pop, blocked punt. And Georgia Southern will come on with the conversion. Let's watch it again. And just a breakdown on the line, and Jason Whitehead picks up the six points. And add an extra point. And just like that, Georgia Southern with 12.49 in the first quarter jumps out in a hurry, and that keeps the friendlies up. We're going to take a timeout and return right after this. He'll, he'll pass. We're back to live action. Shannon Kabanach will take it at his own 10 yard line and gets it out to the 28. And if you just joined us, Jason Whitehead blocked a Jody Farmer punt. Paul Sickley gathered up the pigskin. And just like that, Georgia Southern's on top 7 0. Last week against Middle Tennessee, Bart Hughes, an outside linebacker, did the same thing. So Georgia Southern knows how to block the football. That was Sickley's first start here tonight, today, Dave. So a big play for him. Special teams paying off big dividends. And Grady Bennett, who has one completion on the day, will try to get things going on the ground. That's Jody Farmer, whose punt was just blocked, tries to get around the corner and pushes it up to the 43-yard line. And maybe they can run the football as Randall Boone makes the stop. But uh, that's not the number one game plan right now for Montana. Well, I think he wanted to, the coach is wanting to set a little tempo, get some confidence. And that was a good play, Dave. They got positive yardage. Good downfield blocking by the wide receivers that time, too, for the Grizzlies. It also picks up the first down for Montana. So you get a good look at the Grizzlies and their visiting white uniforms. I have a feeling they'll be dirty after today. And Farmer gets maybe a yard on the carry. Defensive front, awfully good for the Eagles. They're a little bit smaller than our, our offensive people, but they look very strong and they're coming hard right at them. Across the middle, they go with Giff Smith, Charlie Waller. Tim Brown will rotate in and out with Pat Parr. Brown just had the tackle. Steve Busilotti will be at the other end. So after the pickup of a yard, Montana is faced with a second down and nine. Statesboro, Georgia, they will play the national championship Eagles game blitzing, on this Dave. field. Outside blitz. And it goes off to Jody Farmer, and there's a fumble. I'm not sure if they're going to call it an incomplete pass. Incomplete pass will be the call, and Farmer... Eric Russell, the head coach at Georgia Southern, is halfway out on the football field. But I believe that was an incomplete pass. Dave, that time they blitzed both outside backers, and uh, the Grizzlies, I don't think, saw it coming initially. And if that play would have been caught on the initial throw, it could have been a good game. And that's something that Grady Bennett will have to pick up when the linebackers don't stay in their traditional coverage spots when they rush the pass. He'll have to read that and make the adjustment. Third down and nine after the incomplete pass. Looks Once. like they're coming again. Now they back off. Bennett, he's had a whole lot of time, goes to Lorenzo Glenn. And Lorenzo, who was the hero last week, picks up the first down in Montana, breaks into Georgia Southern Territory, and that's something the Eagle defense is not used to. Well, that looked real good there, Dave. That's more like the Grizzlies. Uh, Grady had the time, checked from one to another. You can see what he just took his time, Lorenzo, across the middle. Actually, Jody Farmer was open a fine completion. 
So Glenn, who's the fourth leading receiver on this team during the regular season, picks up the grab and the first down. Montana now will go with Tony Rice as the single setback. And Rice will get the call, and Tony gets a nifty gain across to the, about the 37-yard line. It's really a fun to watch Tony run the ball, Dave. He's got such quick feet, and he's able to pick his holes and just do a good job. A real, real good running back. Grady, with a nice reverse pivot, set that play up pretty well. Harry can be equal 36 and a half second down. 11 minutes to go in the first quarter. University of Montana trailing Georgia Southern 7-0. Right now the Grizzlies on the march. And Bennett will throw it off. It is complete to Glenn. He just, I believe, has enough for the first down. Let's see where they mark the football. But right now it appears as if Lorenzo Glenn has his second first down of the contest. That was a very good play, Dave. Just a one-step drop. Quick uh, hook pattern by the outside receiver. First down, that's all the Grizzlies needed there. They're moving, and again, they look they look normal here. This is the second drive. Montana made the journey here Thursday afternoon, got in late, or I should say very early Friday morning, but they're well rested and trying to tie the score up at seven all. They trail it by a touchdown. And Rice gets the carry, and Tony makes a big rush across to the 18-yard line. We got a flag down, Dave. Uh, this might be holding against the Grizzlies. I'm not sure if uh, that's it, but I think it might be. That's too bad, Dave, as he goes through. I'm not quite sure who is holding there, but they did call it right away, and that'll stop a first down, and they'll move it back 15. Dave, one of the things we might want to talk about a little bit is their coach, Eric Russell. He's quite a personality. Last night they had a dinner at the school, something that I've never seen done before, where both teams came together and, and ate together and had a little uh, informal chat. And He's quite a character. He looks like Don Rickles, and uh, he's a legend here in the community and quite a figure uh, for his team. Now, is he a slower version or a faster version of Don Rickles? He's close to the same. I'm not sure. So after the penalty, the 10-yard infraction will make it first and 20 for Grady Bennett out of the shotgun formation. He's trying to get the attention of Shannon Kabanok. Finally, he does. He goes to the top of your screen, and they don't get it off in time. And Bennett was trying to get Shannon Kabanok to go in motion to pull some of the pressure off the linebackers, and it took him too long. I'm not sure what the confusion was there. He was trying to audible out, and it took too much time. And uh, that could stop this drive. So back-to-back -back penalties puts Montana 15 yards in the hole. And if you're a head coach, that's got to drive you crazy. Don Reed, his fourth year at Montana, has done some wonderful things for the Grizzly football program, trying to carry it one step further. First and a whole bunch for Farmer or I should say for Bennett, who sends Rice to the bottom of the screen. Bennett, in a whole heap of trouble, is going to be brought down, and Bennett doing his best just to stay alive is tackled by Daryl Hendricks, and Hendricks, one of the best linebackers you'll see, but Busilotti and Pat Parr, a whole bunch of... Georgia Southern defensive men in there trying to put the heat on Grady Bennett. What's happening, Dave? Their defensive ends are just, just teeing off and coming very hard. Grady's not being able to find anybody, and this time he tries to scramble. Actually tried to throw right at the end there, but it's good that he held on to it. Better off to punt here or not, not make any uh, mistakes at this point. Well, Montana had it down to the 18-yard line, but not before a whole bunch of penalties. They go with the middle screen to Matt Clark and the Hellgate High School product. We'll get it down to the 48, but not a whole lot there. The Eagles had that all the way, Dave. It was a shuttle, shuttle pass across the middle or a little screen across the middle with the shuttle, and uh, the Eagles definitely knew that was coming. Had it stopped from the beginning. It looks to me, Dave, what, what we're seeing is the defensive ends, if they can continue to put the kind of pressure they are on our tackles, uh, right now they're winning that battle, and we're going to have to adjust to that. 
Some have talked about the matchup between Kirk Scrafford and Giff Smith. Scrafford from Billings. Smith, the, the Georgia Southern outstanding defensive lineman, similar to the one of Eric Helgeson of Boise State. Of course, Scrafford won that battle convincingly. He'll try to do the same today. Bennett, with a lot of time, is going up for Matt Clark. And Clark pretty much had to play defender there well, he as he was well covered Triple on the play by Rodney Oglesby. Triple team that time, Dave, but you got to give the line credit. Lots of time for Grady, and actually that was a good play there. They were out of field goal range. If it would have been intercepted, it would have been like a punt, so it, it didn't hurt him at all. So Jody Farmer will kick it away from his own 37-yard line. Oglesby will pick up the ball. Well, rather he'll just let it roll. And Georgia Southern will operate from their own 16-yard line. So the Montana Grizzlies made somewhat of a drive, but Georgia Southern held up. 8.30 to go in the first quarter. The Eagles on top, 7-0. Seven to nothing. Other semifinal final game, first quarter, 7.44. Left in the first quarter, Stephen F. Austin, 7, Furman, nothing. like that Georgia Southern running a vintage option football and that's one of the best at his position number 11 quarterback Raymond Gross who rambles it all the way down to the 20 yard line and that's one of the keys is how well Montana can defend this option they call it a flex bone it's similar to a wishbone and it's basically three backs that are scooted towards the top of the line with a pair of slot backs that can either go out in a passing pattern or come back and get the football. It's a very exciting offense, Dave. It's much like the wishbone, only it's a little more fun to watch. Very assignment-oriented for our defense. Lester Effort, number 35, will take the football, and he is filling in for the injured Joe Ross. Effort is a power-type running back. Looks somewhat as far as his, his physique... Uh, of Robert Newhouse, who played for the Dallas Cowboys. He'll just play and bowl you over if he gets it up the middle. This will be key here, second down. If the Grizzlies can hold him to a field goal, Dave, it would definitely help. we got to dig in here. They need eight yards to pick up the first down. Montana trailing seven to nothing. Then quarterback Raymond Gross rambled 70 yards, and he slips and falls, and that's one time that the home field did not pay off for the Eagles. Well, that time only two receivers out. Both were covered. You can see that flex bone. That man came in motion, came out front of block, and it does create some excellent angles for the defense or for their offense, so it's fun to watch. Southern trying to pick up enough for the first. They need to get it down to the 10-yard line. They go with the quick pitch to Effort, and he may go all the way and does. Daryl Hopkins in for six points, and the Grizzly defense is stunned. Well, Dave, excellent execution on that play. They came out with the man in motion, faked to the fullback, and took the pitch, and he ran it in. Just perfect execution that time. You can see he takes it up into the middle and get a block or two downfield, he's gone. And with the extra point by Mike Dowis, 
just like that, the University of Montana trails it 14 to nothing. And Bob, that's what you said in the open. Montana cannot afford to get down early in this contest. I think, I think you're right, Dave. That is key. We'll be back with more after this. live action on the kickoff. Kabanak again is averaging about 20 yards on uh, return. Gets it across to the 22 and the Grizzlies I would say here need to pick up something on this possession. That's key Dave. They need to drive here. See if we can get a get a field goal or touchdown. Georgia Southern didn't spend a whole lot of time on that drive. And that flex bone really worked to perfection there, and, and uh, the Grizzlies are going to have to try to stop that. Raymond Gross keyed that play with a 60-yard run to get him deep into Montana territory. Just underway, and Grady Bennett will keep it himself, and behind the block, Big Rick Earps picks up uh, just about enough for the first down. Now they'll give him the first down, and that may be something that would open up some more avenues for Montana whenever Grady Bennett runs the football. Well, if you see what happens there, Dave, they've pulled both guards, and it looked like a counter coming the other way. They faked to the halfback. The defense bid on the pulling lineman, and that allowed Grady to get outside. It was a good play. They won't be able to run that all day, but it was a good play there. Looks like the rain's let up just a bit. Has not stopped since we've been here. Jody Farmer on the carry picks up five. Very strong running there by Jody. Straight ahead, bucking those uh, tackles, moving those knees. Nice job that time. Farmer, who played his high school ball at Libby High. A senior this year, and he'll be a hard one to replace. He punts the ball, running back. It's just about everything for this club. Trying to keep them going, though. They trail it here in the first quarter, 14 to nothing, against the number one team in all of the land, Georgia Southern. Bennett is going to go up top for Lorenzo Glenn, and Glenn makes a magnificent catch at the 20. Beautiful adjustment by Glenn that time, Dave. That was the key. The ball's in the air, and Glenn came back under the defender to make the catch. Good job. You can see it here. He comes back. And uh, just adjust to the, the defense was actually there on the coverage, but watch the adjustment that he makes, comes back underneath and makes the play. Great job. So on the 34-yard reception by Glenn, Montana is now knocking at the door, and this is what they need to build up some confidence against this Eagle defense. Single setback is Farmer, and he'll get the carry. Good, good blocking that time at the point of attack. Not a lot of yardage, but the Grizzlies won that battle there, Dave. Lyman fired out, gave him a hole, and he got three or four yards. Pat Parr on the stop. Montana coaches felt second, third, and fourth quarters that they could begin to start to move that defensive front. But they were worried about the first quarter. Coach Russell was concerned about our size on our line, and that time was a good example where we did win that battle. And that'll be key throughout this game. Bennett, who on the afternoon is five of seven for 60 yards. We'll try to pick up the second, the first down, and Glenn dropped that one. That's too bad because the coverage was uh, not that good and excellent protection by the front line. Glenn is also a senior on this team at 5'9", 165 pounds. Kind of come into his own the last few weeks here at the University of Montana. He's already caught three balls for 54 yards. And Bennett's found a popular receiver early on. The Georgia Southern faithful trying to make it tough on Bennett. Third down and six across the middle on the side is Matt Clark. And he can't make the first down. Beautiful. Coming up was Randall Boone, and that was a fine play by Boone to hold him from the marker. 
Grady did an excellent job there, Dave. There was a blitz that time by the strong side linebacker. He almost sacked Grady. Grady hung in and threw the ball. And uh, actually, to get a completion there was an excellent effort by Montana. Now it's decision time, Bob. Fourth down and one, and it looks like the Grizzlies are going to go for it. Well, I... I think Coach Reed here is thinking they're down by two touchdowns. They get one back here, and he must feel that his front line can can make a big enough hole for Jody to get a first down. I, I see him running here. Let's see if uh, if they do. Bennett may just call his own number. Just needs a yard, and Farmer gets the first down. That's exactly what it was, Dave. That's a case there of Coach Reed feeling that they need a touchdown here, and his people up front are stronger than theirs, and he's going to go right at them. Well, when you trail 14 nothing, why not go for it? I think they might have to measure here, Dave. It's, for, it's fairly close. It'll depend on the spot. It, I think he's got it, but we'll have to see. Score just in with 3 minutes 47 seconds to go in the first quarter. Stephen F. Austin leads Furman 14 to nothing. Remember, the winner of that game will play the winner of this game for the national title. And as you see, the official says it's enough for the first down, so Bennett will get four more to operate with. Interesting, Bob, around town folks were already talking about a Furman Georgia Southern National Championship. They were overlooking Montana before this game even started. They really were, Dave. We'll talk, try to talk about that, too, here in a minute. Bennett, under some big pressure, is picked off. Well, Taz Dixon, from his free safety position, came up and picked it off. Bennett probably shouldn't have thrown that football. Shannon Kabanok was near, but uh, Dixon right there for the interception. Exactly right, Dave, on the, on the non-throw. Grady rolled to the right. He was looking for the corner pattern there, trying to run a corner pattern, but he, the man was covered, and Grady decided to come back, and that is a mistake. You don't want to throw back across the middle on the goal line. Credit part of that interception to defensive tackle Pat Parr, who put the heat on Bennett. And now will be your chance to see this flex bone operated by Raymond Gross. And fumble! You lose ball, and Marcus Bowen had it, but then he lost it. I think they've got it back, Dave. And I hope everybody at home is having fun watching this offense. It's so pretty to watch. They fake on the fullback. They reverse pivot. They've got motion with the option to pitch or throw. It's just a fun one to watch. And uh, that time, uh, they dropped the ball. And that could happen on this option attack today. This is a team that does not fumble the football a lot. Don Reed said before the game, we would like to cause a turnover. And he said if there is a turnover, it's because of what the D's done. Because... Georgia Southern does not stop itself. No mental mistakes. Gross makes the pitch out, and Carl Miller gets it out to the 36. And when they go to the wide side of the field, if they can make that pitch to the second back, look out. Just again, a very pretty play. They faked on the fullback, came outside, and the Grizzlies are being fooled by that right now. And Coach Reed said we're going to have to play assignment defense. Everybody plays a man and cancels out. But right now, it's not working too well. They're having good success with it. So another first down, 2.27 to go in the first quarter. Georgia Southern on top, 14 to nothing. Effort, the first man through, picks up about four yards. The only team that we've played this year, Dave, that, that has a similar type offense, but it is a bit different, is, of course, Montana State with the wishbone. And the Grizzlies, so that was the only opportunity to really have a lot of time to work on this type offense. Second down and seven for the Eagles on the quick count. They'll dive it to effort again, and he just bulls his way. He's about a yard shy of the first down. And they'll run that play all morning. Yeah, it looks real good. They're doing a good job with it. This is the furthest Don Reed has ever taken a football team, and he'd like to go all the way. But right now, his troops are trailing by a pair of touchdowns. First man up the middle, Effort, who had a career day last week, filling in for Joe Ross, who injured his right knee, he is just shy of the first down. Califat on the stop there, Dave. Credit Joel uh, with a great stop there, and that helped the Grizzlies. They're going to have to punt. Terry Harvin will punt the ball on fourth down, and back to receive will be Shannon Kabanach. Harvin can hang that ball a mile in the air. Kabanach. 
only will pick up a couple of yards. And when we return, the University of Montana will have it first down and 10. The Grizzlies trying to get things going. Might want to point out on that last punt return, Shannon Kabanach lost his jersey. They just tore it off. I'll have to dig him out a new one. Please, Steve Hackney, the equipment manager, packed a couple extras along. I know the flight over, they said the plane was heavy. Maybe that's why. Couldn't be because we rode along. That's, that's right. Trying to see what the coaches are thinking. I, I like what they're doing, Dave. They're not panicking here. They go ahead. They did go ahead there and run the ball. Uh, not trying to get anything back too quick. Of course, the mistake in the end zone hurt them, but uh, you don't want to. You don't want to panic here. You want to take your time and come back. I want to point out, Kabanak is wearing number eight, and Tony Rice wearing 14. Will pick up a couple of yards, and that's going to do it for the first quarter of action here. The Grizzlies find themselves in a little bit of trouble. We played one quarter here in Statesboro, Georgia. The University of Montana sitting on top 14 to nothing. Across the state. Right now the Grizzlies trying to liven it up just a bit. They trail 14 to nothing. This will be the first play of the second quarter. On third down and four, Mr. Bennett. And intended for Shannon Kabanach, but the ball just didn't have the distance. He was open, Dave. Uh, just Grady didn't have enough there to get it there. He was open for a minute. So that'll bring in the punting unit. And if you joined us late, Jody Farmer on his first punt of the day had it blocked by Jason Whitehead. Looks Paul like Sickley gathered it in and scored the point. Looks like they're coming. Now they back off. And Farmer gets it away. As Rodney Oglesby will just let it roll. And let the Georgia Southern offense come out and operate on the 31-yard line. This second quarter could be pivotal for the Grizzlies. Well, Georgia Southern has never allowed a team to score in, the, in many games, Dave, in the third quarter. I don't know how long it's been since they've shut out anyone in the first quarter. I know that uh, a lot of teams have been scoring on them, but uh, key here, as you said, will be for the Grizzlies to shut them down. So Raymond Gross will operate the flex bone. Little counter option and makes the quick pitch and boy they are tough when they're running and gunning. Ernest Thompson gets the pitch and he'll pick up about uh, nine yards. Be close to a first down. They'll give him eight yards on the carry. Well, they say the quarterback lives with the football all year long, practicing that pitch almost every day. And what a beautiful play, Davey. Reverse pivot, comes outside, runs with his uh, option man. Right at the last second, he could either keep it or pitch it. And Gross, when he runs the football, as you see the distance they've got to go to pick up the first down, or rather how far he went past the first down, Gross, when he's 100-plus, this team is 15-0, and 0, or rather 10-0. and 0. Of course, the way they've been playing, it doesn't matter if he goes 100-plus or not. Got single coverage on this wideout. They're going to go ahead and run the ball. And Gross carries it. And we'll get it just about to the midfield marker. Pick up of six yards. That time, good contained by the Grizzlies. They came inside, and everybody followed the play and were able to stop it pretty well. Tim Houck making the stop, the All-American from Big Timber. That's a guy that's going to be tough to replace next year. He is a dandy. He's been fun to watch all year. And we talked to him a little bit going into this game. He was concerned that he could stay with the flex, but he's done a good job. Second down and three, and they'll go with the pitch again. And this time the traction for Lester Effort is just not there. And let's see, is he, I think he lost a yard on the slip. This is really important here that the defense of Montana can, can hold and get a punt. If they were able to get a first down or two, they'd be in field goal range. So this is important series, third and four. We have yet to see Gross put the football up in the air. Of course, he hasn't needed to to this point. 
And he's going to keep it himself. And a fine play by Stevie Collins coming up from the linebacker position to make the stop. So Collins stops Gross, and it will force the Eagles to punt. That's very good for the Grizzlies. Very good momentum shift there for their defense to be able to stop them. If they could get a block here, it would certainly help. Harvin will punt it from his 31, and they're going to throw the flag. And we'll have to see. They needed five yards, so regardless of the penalty, it's going to be a first for Georgia Southern. Well, that's a bad break for the Grizz, Dave. Uh, he almost got the block, but he, he rolled into the kicker, and they threw the flag. We'll have to see whether or not they slipped on this turf going into the kicker, because when you put the brakes on here, you don't get the insta stop. Well, you can tell what happened. They had, the, they had the block on. He was coming hard. He tried to get it, and he rolled right into him. He was not blocked into it. It's a pretty good call. And it looked like Stevie Collins on that. And it will give Southern the first down. So far, Dave, those are the two key plays. Grady's interception in the end zone when the Grizzlies should have scored, and that break right there. Uh, those are two big mistakes that you can't make in this type of game. Well, they called it a roughing the kicker, the 15-yarder. And uh, I thought it might be the five-yarder at first, but uh, they said that he went in hard and fast. And it's not to mention the first down. It puts Georgia Southern into the University of Montana territory as they mark it at the 38-yard line. Puts incredible pressure on your defense. You give him a first down inside the 40 now. And effort goes up the middle. Mike Rankin on the stop. The feeling we'll be talking about Mike Rankin quite a bit. It's the linebacker. Three-time first-team selection. All Big Sky Conference. It's the first time I've seen a team just run the ball for a whole quarter and... and uh, Start of the second, they're just running right at the Grizz. As we mentioned, coming in, Montana, the number one rushing defense in the nation. Gross going to put it up for the first time, and he's got a man all alone. And that's exactly what happens, Dave, when you run, 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 run. The defense adjusts to that. He was beautiful play. He faked like he was going to run the ball. Step back and threw a strike. He Donnie actually, Allen made the grab. Actually, he, was, he underthrew the receiver. The receiver was wide open. Kevin Morris on the coverage was thinking run. You can see him step back and throw the ball, and it did float, and he uh, had to wait for it. If that would have been over his shoulder, that would have been six. And when it's that close to the goal line, look out for Southern. The length of a football for six. They load it up with the power eye, and going in for six is Ernest Thompson. And the Grizzlies trail it 20 to nothing. They just ran right at him, and of course, uh, having it on the half-yard line, that's what you'd want to do with a team like this. Power eye, and, and uh, scoot it in. Very impressed with their quarterback, Dave. I haven't seen a mistake all day by him. Mike Dowis will try to make it 21-0. And he splits the uprights. 11-34 to go in the second quarter. The Grizzlies are trailing in unfriendly territory 21-0. After the Ernest Thompson touchdown, the University of Montana, rather than 14 to nothing, trails at 21 zip. And Shannon Kobanoff, wearing number eight now, takes it on the run. And this guy, if he can break out, he's gone. Gets it up to the 36-yard line. And I don't know, what does the University of Montana need to do? Definitely score with the football. Well, again, Dave, it's been a case of just a couple of mistakes to allow them to get ahead by 21 points. They might be trailing seven to nothing. But the main thing is just to relax. You can see the touchdown here again. They're running right at him with the power eye and uh, two on one and basically just push it in. It's 
So the Grizzlies trying to get something going. Bennett will go to Matt Clark, and Clark can't find the handle, and it's been that kind of day for the Grizzlies, at least on the last few series. Well, what they did there, Dave, is they faked a little run, and they pulled the guard to lead Grady out. He was he had good protection, and they could have went deep if uh, they would have had a receiver out. And what they did is took the receivers deep to, to open it up, and he just went through him. We talked about the attitude of this team, Dave. They already sold out, as I understand, the game for next week, the championship game, and they'd only sold 9,000 tickets for this one. And it's just the whole attitude here. They expect to be in the final, and they're very, very confident. I want to point out that Georgia Southern on the same quarter system as the University of Montana, so this is their Christmas break. And Jody Farmer couldn't get a break there as the ball goes incomplete. Jody realized he made a little mistake after he missed it. He kind of pushed it up, and then he went after it to get it down. You can, you can see it just kind of pops out the palms of his hands, and then right there he realized, uh-oh, it could be an interception. This is trouble, Dave. They're excited. The fans are getting into it. It's third and, third and ten. Montana's got to find something to do right here. And the crowd will try to intimidate the visiting team. Well, we talked about not letting that momentum get away, and they're in trouble right now. Bennett needs to get the ball to the 46. He sends Rice out in, and he'll go to Mike Trevathan, who stays in bounds, but about two yards shy. And you have to wonder, in a third down and, and long situation, you want to go to the marker. That's too bad. That's right, Dave. They want to try to get past the marker and then throw the ball. But he was short of it, and they're going to have to punt. Montana punting unit, very cautious, especially after having the one blocked early in the game. Farmer gets it away. Not be too serious, but it looks like he's not been able to put any pressure on it. That'll hurt if they lose Joe. Joe from CMR High School in Great Falls. He's had a brilliant season. Didn't make the all-conference squad, but a lot of folks said he should have. And Gross has nowhere to go. He's wrapping up on the play was Brian Tripp and Tripp, a little homegrown product from Missoula. And that's what you got to do with Gross is just wrap him up and don't let him go. Still, though, our defense is confused. That time you could see people looking at each other like, where's the ball? And it's just so hard to find it because he's making such good fakes on the belly of that fullback. Uh, it's a beautiful offense to watch. They're doing a great job with it. Gross, so quick, able to turn 180 degrees. The split second, and the heat being put on by Wade Tamas. And it's complete. Talking about a quarterback, again, not making any mistakes. He was pressured, rolled out, took some time, and got a, got a completion. I think the flag is against the Grizzlies for holding in the secondary. Donnie Allen with the grab. But watch how Gross just buys himself some time. Tamas trying to put the heat on, but just steps up and delivers. Score in Furman will update this for you. Stephen F. Austin leads now just by a touchdown, 14 to 7. We understand there's a couple of inches of snow on the ground. Furman for the game. Holding against the Grizzlies. Holding against the University of Montana is the call. So you get a good look at Eric Russell, the head coach of Georgia Southern. He's been here at eight years since the program started in 81, the only coach they've known. 81, 22, and 1. That includes a pair of national championships in 85 and 86. They're looking for another one this year. As Georgia Southern just grinded it out against the Grizzly defense. Now they're trying to run the clock now, Dave, with a three-touchdown lead. They'd be happy to get halftime with a three-touchdown lead. Of course, if they could control the ball and eat that clock and score one more time, that would be exactly what Coach Russell would want. Gross on second and six will pitch it out. And Daryl Hopkins is a big game. Good hustle by Rankin to even get there, though, Dave. We were out of position. We took a bite on the fake, and then the quarterback with an excellent choice on the option. And credit Mike Rankin for a lot of hustle. Watch here on the pitch. Good decision by the quarterback, and Rankin had to really come even to knock him out of bounds. And it's another first down for Georgia Southern. This quarterback is, hasn't made a mistake yet, just doing an excellent job faking and, and his decisions on the option. Just a junior. They've had a tradition of fine quarterbacks here. Tracy Ham, 
They used to call it the ham bone when he was here, and they're going to go up, and all alone is Ernest Thompson. Wow, what a nice play. Drop back, pass all the way. Coverage was decent. He put the ball right on the shoulder. Donnie Graves on the coverage that time. The coaching staff had pulled out Kevin Morris, who had the mistake on the earlier passing play. This time, Donnie Graves couldn't stop the football. Excellent pass. Hit him right in the numbers, right over the shoulder. Beautiful play. We know the Montana defense was worried about the running game of Georgia Southern. But what about the passing game, Bob? Well, you can see why they're number one, Dave, and why they haven't lost here in 35 games. So disciplined. The ball is on the 13. Montana, there was a fumble, and let's see who picked it up. They may say the running back was down before he lost it, and that's going to be the call. As on the carry was Lester Effort. It looked like the pigskin slipped away from him. Again, now a lot of pressure on the defense to try to stop stop any kind of, of a touchdown or scoring drive here. 21 to nothing. The University of Montana trailing in the second quarter. And this guy, number 11, has been tough. But Mike McGowan comes up and makes the stop. That was a good play that time by the Grizzlies. Coming up and uh, putting a hit on the quarterback. Good play. Galen Lawton, excuse me, on the stop. Lawton did not play last week because of an injury. Watch Galen come in quick and wrap him up around the legs. Good, good play by Galen. Talked to him yesterday. He said he was going to have to play real well. And on that play, he sure did. So it brings up a third down and eight. And it would be a moral victory if Montana could hold this club to three points. And they get it off to Effort, tries to get outside. And a shoestring tackle made by guess who? Number 37, Tim Houck. He's got his glove in there just enough to slow up Effort and hold him from the first down. Beautiful play by Houck that time coming in. The, the blocking was there. And he came up, and he's the one that uh, stopped that play exclusively. So Mike Dowis will attempt the 27-yard field goal. Try to put his club up 24 to nothing. And it's perfect. Georgia Southern with seven minutes to go in the second quarter. All over the University of Montana, 24 to nothing. And we're back in the deep south. So far, the Grizzlies have not enjoyed the Southern hospitality, trailing 24 to nothing. And Shannon Kobanok wisely just lets that one go out of bounds and will re-rack it and kick it again. Good decision that time to let a hit and go out of bounds. It'll back him up five yards, give him another chance. Haven't seen Montana run a reverse on a kickoff this year, Dave. Uh, might be a chance to throw something in here to try to get something going. Nine plays. They rambled 61 yards, and they ended up with the 27-yard three-pointer by Dowis, and that's where we are right now with seven minutes to go in the second quarter. Montana trailing 24 to nothing. This one has been all Georgia Southern. Exception of one drive where Montana mounted it deep into Eagle territory, but penalties and the, an interception halted that drive. So from five yards deeper, Cabanot will take it, and Shannon gets it across to the 35-yard line. And I'll tell you, when you talk about guys who are tough, He's right up there. It takes a lot of courage to get out there at 5'5", 155 pounds and mix it up. He's not afraid to. Fish was a little slow on that whistle, Dave. They let him really take some hits there, and his momentum was definitely stopped. And I, I'd have blown the whistle a little quicker than what just happened on that kickoff. So Grady Bennett will operate from his own 34-yard line and try to get things going for the University of Montana offense. And just the design bootleg, but nowhere to go. He's coming up to make the stop was Kevin Whatley. Good discipline by the defense. They pulled the guard to get outside and help with the little protection, but the Eagles stayed perfectly with the play all the way. Number four contained Grady and wrapped him up. 
Might want to point out that was a designed run all the way. Bennett was not trying to pass the ball. Five total yards, 36 total yards offense for the University of Montana. Or 105 yards total offense for Montana so far. And that's an incomplete pass. They were trying to set up the middle screen to Matt Clark, and Bennett, in a sense, forced that one in there. Clark was pushed back so much by the Georgia Southern front line, there was nowhere to go. He didn't even see the football. Well, it wasn't just Clark. It was also the linemen of the Grizzlies, Dave. What's happening is that front line of the Eagles is really coming, and they're getting too much, too much pressure into the backfield, and that time the shuttle pass couldn't work. We just haven't found a key at all. We're third and, third and long. Bennett will go up top again, and he's going to go down, making the stop is Giff Smith. And Grady did a good good read there, Dave. Every receiver, four of them or five of them, were all covered. He had no one open. He had to do that. Giff Smith, 6'1", 225 pounds, a junior, relies a lot on his quickness. This whole front line depends a lot on the quickness. Farmer will have to try to get this off in a hurry because they're all coming and they throw the hanky on the roughing call and we'll have to see if it's a five yarder or a 15 yard. Well, I don't think Jody fell to the ground, but if we can get a first down here, that, that would definitely help with some momentum. We'll wait and see what it is. That's our second roughing call of this contest. Okay. See it here, he jumps up and he actually did hit the leg while he was in the air, Dave, so I hope that they do call that a first down. Well, they call it a personal foul, so your hopes have come true as the Grizzlies. Looks like it's clearing up a little bit here, Dave. The rain has stopped. The clouds are seem to be lifting a little, so could have a good second half in terms of weather. Of course, as I mentioned earlier, I don't think it stopped raining since we arrived in Savannah early Friday morning. Well, the key here, Dave, now, they just have to score before halftime. Whatever it takes, a field goal or a touchdown, they, they, I think they have to score here. 5.36 to go after the roughing penalty. They move it to the 42. Bennett will keep it on the ground. And Jody Farmer will just about get it up to midfield. Nice and for the most part, Bob, when they've ran the football today, they've had some success. Nice job that time by Jody, giving the false leg and kind of picking his way for the positive yards. Farmer, 29 yards. He's carried it six. With four minutes, 54 seconds to go. The Montana Grizzlies trying to get things going after the 18-yard run by Jody Farmer. Score just in Stephen F. Austin scoring another touchdown. 6.30 to go in the second quarter. They're up on Furman 21-7. Furman, the defending national champions. They defeated this club right here, Georgia Southern, last year in Pocatello. Georgia Southern already talking uh, after that game about returning the favor this season, and they would be playing on their home field. But first of all, they got to get by the Montana Grizzlies, who trail at 24 to nothing, but they are mounting their second real drive of the contest. They are in good position here, actually within field goal range now. So the key here is to keep driving and, and get some points in this possession. Now well, it looks like the official is going to tough this one out. The crowd gives their hand of approval. It's like they're coming with a blitz, Dave. Now they're backing up. We'll see. They do. And they give it to Tony Royce, who is popped at the line. Nice job that time with their linebackers in front, Dave. They're just really handling us sometimes, not always, but that time they did. Watch number 95, Sam Davidson, come in and put the hurt big on hit. Tony Rice. Big hit. That's a great hit. Oh, 
So Rice lost a yard on the play. And it brings up a second down and 11. Fumble. Bennett picks it up. He loses it again and then gathers it back. That time they blitzed again, Dave. It looks to me like their decision here is to play pass real hard on coverage and then come with a blitz real often and keep the Grizzlies on their toes. And it's really working right now in this drive. Not sure if the fumble occurred during the snap from Chad Germer or if Grady just lost control of it. Imagine the ball is somewhat slick today. Their linebackers playing very, very strong on the blitz. Bennett trying to get a little extra time, moves back in the shotgun formation. He's going to go up top for Lorenzo Glenn, and Glenn makes. No, they're going to call it incomplete. Glenn thought that he held it long enough to stay in bounds. Uh, pretty good call there. They went on the corner pattern into the end zone. Brady threw a good pass, just kind of a jump ball, but out of bounds. Let's watch it again, and let's see if Lorenzo held on to it long enough. Uh, good defense. See, Davey really went after him and actually knocked it out of his hands. That's too bad. They might think about a fake field goal or a fake punt here. I think they'll be happy just to get it off. There's a flag on the play. Jody tries to keep it inside, but it'll roll back for a touchback. No, I'm not sure of the flags here, but... We just threw another flag. I'm not sure if one of the Georgia Southern players were talking to an official. He just... He was talking with Rodney Oglesby, and then he just threw the flag up in the air. We'll see what that's all about. Georgia Southern. Well, we've got one call. Too many players on the field for the Eagles. We'll get another, get another shot at the ball here, Dave. The reason I said to fake it, if you're going to punt, the field position is good enough for us that, well, actually, we're in uh, field goal range now. It's like a first down. Of course, the Grizzlies are set up. Uh, special teams coach Bruce Reed. They make the calls right at the line. If they see the open avenue or not enough men on the line, they can make an automatic call to fake it. That's a big break, Dave, a huge break for the Grizzlies, and, and they just have to take advantage of it. So after the call, it moves it down to the 18-yard line. Grady Bennett, the home crowd, trying to put the heat on the Flathead High School product. But Bennett has seen it before, but Jody Farmer sees the whole front line of Georgia Southern. The front line was beat at the point of attack real bad there, Dave. They just came real hard. Sam Davidson putting the stop on. See it right up front. There's just too much penetration, and our offensive people aren't keeping in contact. And they're coming off the blocks too easy. Check that. I should say Giff Smith and Pat Parr on the stop. Sam Davison probably wouldn't be wearing a Georgia Southern uniform, but rather a Grizzly uniform today. Hopefully 24 to nothing. The University of Montana trailing with 2.48 to go in the first half. Bennett up ran out of time. He was trying to change at the line, and the clock ran to double zero. Hey, you can see what's happening, Dave. Uh, Grady's... Doesn't know what's going on in the secondary. They're stepping up with their free safety and outside backers, and they're backing up, and it, it's bothering you. So both times Montana has penetrated deep into Georgia Southern territory, they have been faced with penalties that have cost them dearly. And now Bennett looks at a second down and 17. I think you're going to see him blitz here, Dave. Bennett, with no help in the protection, goes up for Jody Farmer, and Farmer tries to make the grab, and he was wide open in the end zone, just a little overthrown. That's a ball Jody's been known to come down with. You're right, Dave. He was open. Uh, Grady just threw it a little bit over, over his shoulder. No fault of Grady, really, and Jody wasn't able to adjust. He was open on the pattern. Montana with five receivers in the pattern. I guess they're almost baiting, as you've talked about, Georgia Southern sending their linebackers in on Bennett. They're almost baiting them to do so. 
And they're really using him as a momentum swing here, and it's worked so far. Excellent defense. Third down and 17. Here they and come. it goes across to Lorenzo Glenn, and Glenn makes the grab off the rebound, and it's the old tip drill paying off for Montana. Well, Dave, we got another break there. They blitzed the backer. Grady had to throw it early. That ball should have been intercepted. The defender, uh, you can watch it here. The number 56 is coming hard. You have to throw it early. Uh, the ball is tipped by the defender, and we're able to come down with a big break for us. Jim Muttimer tipped that football, and he's wishing and he could have somehow held on to it. Montana knocking on the door. First down and goal to go from the seven yard line for Bennett. He'll give it off to Jody Farmer and Farmer gets it up to the two yard line for Montana. And this is definitely their first real threat of putting it in. The ball is now down to the two yard line and Montana goes with the goal line offense. The short yardage bring in a couple extra tight ends. Go with Ken Kostecki in the backfield along with Jody Farmer. He told me not to call him Ken, Dave. That's Jimmy Kostecki. Or Jim Kostecki. I'll keep it straight. <laughs> Farmer goes in for six. And the Grizzlies get on the board for the first time in this contest with a minute 23 to go in the second quarter. Jody Farmer from a yard out trying to keep the Montana faithful. Alive. Dave, you got to credit Jimmy Kostecki. He played fullback at Sentinel. He was all state at fullback. That's why they use him there in that I formation. And he's an excellent blocking back. He came in and made that hole for, for Jody, and Jody cut it outside for touchdown. That's exactly what Montana needed, Dave. We're, we're not out of the game yet. It's still a, we're still trailing, but this is going to help a lot. So Deuce with the extra point makes it 24 to 7. So the Grizzlies down, but they certainly aren't out. A minute 23 to go in the first half. 24 to 7, Georgia Southern. Four to seven, and I've seen in this situation before the Grizzlies going with the onside kick. It's only a minute 23. Not sure if they would go with it today. And Kirk Deuce answers that question in a hurry as he boots it deep to I, Donnie Allen, and Allen runs it right up the middle, and they'll operate from their own 28. I think a good decision, Dave, not to onside kick there. There's enough time on the clock if you don't get the onside. The other team would have an excellent chance to score. We're going to get a chance here to see the touchdown by Jody Farmer. I guess one of the keys on that, along with the blocking, was the second effort because it looked like he was held up at the line right here. And then watch here. He just busts it and goes in, and that's where we are now, 24-7. to The Grizzlies with the lead, but Georgia Southern, just like that, can come back. And Carl Miller rambles it out to the 45-yard line. And again... What we're doing there is we're just being beat on the on the pitch. We took the quarterback and pitch man was open. Gross is going to go down. Edwards hanging on. Somehow he gets the football off to Lester Dafford. Wow, what a play, Dave. He, he should have been sacked five times. And uh, I guess that's why they're number one in the country. Well, if you want to talk frustration for a defensive lineman to have the quarterback wrapped up, he actually spun him around. Watch number 90, Dan Edwards, come in and just put a necktie on Gross. Spins him around. A little bit of luck there, but wow, n nice play. But the key here, Dave, they're not in field goal range yet. Montana needs to relax. There's 52 seconds till half, and, and don't let them score. A field goal or a touchdown would be real bad right before half. It's okay. You don't need to wipe well, you got stuff all over. You get a good look at Raymond Gross, number 11, talking with Erskine Russell, the head coach, and all the troops. This is only the second time Georgia Southern has ever faced a Big Sky Conference football team. They defeated... Nevada Reno in 1986. Reno at the time was ranked number one in the nation. But Southern put away the Pac 48 38 and then went on to take home the national title. Of 
quite a tradition they developed in a short time here as we mentioned before they've only played football here in Statesboro since 1981 and to come in and draw up a couple of national titles the coach is known as a living legend here in town Dave and, and he's quite a character the school has grown by 6,000 students in four years that's the kind of growth and they credit that to the football program in part and the quick pitch and it's going to be Carl Miller who will just carry Miller who will just cover it at the 49 and the hurry up offense now for Georgia Southern with 40 seconds to go before the half the clocks are key right now for the Grizzlies Gross is going to put it up in the air so far he's three for three Thad Hughes nearly got him now Gross is going to just throw it up as far as he can and Marcus Bowen nearly made the interception but they're going to call it incomplete pass everything happened in that backfield Dave that quarterback again should have been sacked any normal quarterback would have been this kid is is unbelievable flag on the play we may see a holding call against Georgia Southern as long as Gross was back there he is a dandy. I guess uh, at, at starting only a junior, too. He, the team is like 30 and 2 behind this kid. Only two interceptions that he's had against him. And as we mentioned, they don't fumble the ball. He doesn't turn it over. Two interceptions, I should say, in his last 134 passes. There's an update on that Furman game, 21 to 7. Stephen F. Austin on top. They're trying to advance on to the national championship. As we mentioned earlier, regardless who goes to the title game, it will be played right here on this field in Statesboro. Southern leading Montana 24 to 7 in their quest to go. The pass intended for Carrie Miller, or Carl Miller rather, and it was incomplete. And it will bring up third down. 18 seconds, they, they'll, they'll try it again, Dave, I'm sure, to throw a little 20, 30-yard pass, try to get field goal position, get out of bounds, stop the clock, and kick a field goal. Unless, of course, they go for the touchdown. Georgia Southern, a team that once they get on top, they like to pile it up. And here goes Gross, and he'll throw it. It is complete. They didn't get out of bounds, but they could call timeout. They're still not in field goal range. Donnie Allen makes the grab. The longest field goal for Dow is, is 54 yards. They might take a shot out of here, Dave, with five seconds to go. If the wind helps him at all, right now it, it's blowing you sideways across the field, so it shouldn't be a too much factor. Now let's see where they spot it. It'd be nearly a 60-yard shot. Yeah, they'll probably throw the ball. One, one interesting thing, Dave, as we go into the third quarter after half, this team has, ne has not been scored on in, in a long time in the third quarter. And it's almost a, a legend here with everybody in the stands and the coaching staff and the players. So if the Grizzlies can come out and score early in that third quarter, I think it could upset them a little bit and, and get them back in the game, only down two touchdowns. Well, we hope you're enjoying all the fun. I would imagine a majority of our viewers, not all the all of them, would like to see the Grizzlies on top, trailing 24 to 7. But as we mentioned, the last drive was promising for Montana. The Joni Farmer one-yard plunge to give the Grizzlies their first score of the game. This will be the last play of the quarter. Gross is just going to throw it up in the end zone and hope something. Oh, how about that? Unbelievable, Dave. Donnie Allen makes the grab. <laughs> Unbelievable, Dave. That time he went downfield, as you said, just a Hail Mary. We've seen that one before. Threw it up, touchdown. Tim Houck is livid on the sidelines. He is talking to the official. I'm not sure if he felt I can see it here that again. he was pushed or shoved, but look, everybody's in there. Oh, what a play. Somebody upstairs wants uh, this team to to win this game, Dave. That was Tim Houck who was in there, nearly had the interception, went in the air. He was upset about something, more than likely the touchdown. And there's no time on the clock. This is a, oh, it's terrible for Montana. Extra points, good. 
Well, after the Hail Mary touchdown, the Grizzlies go into the locker room, and if that doesn't take a long out of the team, I don't know what will. 31 to 7, that's our halftime score, and we're going to go down on the field with Dave Guffey's talking with head coach Erskine Ruskell. Dave? Defended it, the ball tipped up, and he got it. No time on the clock. So what a what a break for Georgia Southern. Donnie Allen in the right place at the right time. Tim Houck actually has this football in his hands. 37 comes up, and Tim was not going for the interception. You could tell by the way his hands were. He was just trying to bat it down, and unfortunately, it went up in the air, and that's where we stand right now, 31 to 7. That time Carl Miller tried to drive through him and uh, put it up. Actually, Dave, Montana hasn't, as funny as it might sound, at 31-7, hasn't played all that bad. It's been breaks. The one where they were down on the 10-yard line and had the interception, that was a big one. The roughing the punter, which led to a touchdown. So uh, a couple breaks and a couple missed breaks, or if they wouldn't have had that happen, they'd be a little bit closer. Again, I think the key is to come out stop them right away in the second half if they if they can if they can't it might be it might be real trouble for them if they could stop them and score early in the third quarter they'd be back in the game a little bit well so far it's been all eagles the university of montana trailing at the half 31 to 7 we'll be back with more right after this now are in a situation where they have to gamble. I, I don't disagree with the onside, Dave. I think that was a decent idea because if they would have got it, uh, they would have had a chance to get some momentum. So, but you can't break down on defense like that and let the, let the team come up. Again, you can see the touchdown here. He's wide open uh, over the top of his shoulder. Look at there, no defender within except number seven who's coming off another man within 10, 15 yards. Kevin Morris coming over from his cornerback position. Just for a second. The defensive coaches talked all week long about how the two cornerbacks were going to be relied on heavily in passing coverage. Marcus Bowen, number five, Kevin Morris, Don Graves, they were going to be expected to play man defense and going up against this guy here, Ernest Thompson, number 12, and you see 35, Lester Effort. It's been tough. I had uh, dinner last night with Lester Effort, uh, Dave, at the table, and he's one of these no-neck guys. You can't really tell what he's doing, but a uh, very nice individual. This whole team, very, very polite and uh, very gracious. Cabanock struggles with the ball, but then gathers it up and gets it across to the 30, and there's a flag on the field. And some talking and a little extra pushing going on afterwards. Three plays, 49 yards, and capped off by the 35-yard touchdown. That's where we are now, 38-7, to and to make matters worse, Montana is tacked with a clipping penalty. Dave, whatever they're paying their weather forecasters here, it's not enough because when we got here, they said it was going to clear and get sunny. They promised it would get clear and get sunny today at noon, and it's still raining and very cloudy. Uh, they do say it will be sunny tomorrow. We'll have to see it when we get on the plane if that's true. Oh, we understand that they can pack in this stadium in the neighborhood of 20,000. That's not just in the seats. They would have to sit in the grass here, but uh, nowhere near that number today. But the folks who are here in the rain gear are loving it. Bennett goes across to Matt Clark, and Clark can't find the handle. Nearly coming up with an interception was Taz Dixon. Matt was wide open that time, hit him on the shoulder pads. Very uncharacteristic of Matt to drop a ball like that, but that could be some of the emotion that's starting to fade. Watch it right here, catch him just a little bit behind him, but still real catchable, and on a normal day, Matt had cut that every time. Well, you think back how important the receivers have been the last two playoff games in the big win against Jackson State, Clark over 100 yards. Last week, Trevathan over 100 yards. They've all been in that neighborhood, but not here today. They'll try to run it. Jody Farmer behind the block of Rick Earps. Nowhere to go. Jim Mutimer makes the stop. And again, we had receivers downfield on an option pass with Jody there, and 
they were well covered, uh, even if we were thinking about that. Talk about that offensive line of Montana. Kirk Scrafford, the senior, injured his knee last week against Eastern Illinois, but iced it down last night, was fired up to play. He started Rick Erps in a guard position. Chad Germer, the center. Jay Fagan from Butte, the senior, hoping this is not his last game. They go across to Trevathan. And if you've seen Mike Trevathan play before, you know that does not happen. Beautiful throw by Grady right in the hands. Uh, no excuse for that drop. See it here, Grady with a nice release. Literally hits him in the hands and uh, lack of concentration, drop the ball. So Farmer will be forced to come in and punt. Waiting for the football will be Rodney Oglesby. He's waiting just about at the mid field mark. Southern will set up for a return. And Oglesby will try to cut across the grain. And look out, he's going to go the other way. Jody Farmer's going to have to make the stop. And Solser will come over for the Montana Grizzlies. Mark Solser, but there's a flag. I would have to guess there would be a clipping penalty. Probably, but they did have a nice wall set up as he faked to come to the left and took off down the right sideline. Good call by uh, their coaching staff. Talk to uh, the Georgia folks, Dave, about how they practice and their team concept. Everything here is team-oriented, uh, very unselfish with their people. Mike, you'll look at a clip here, Dave. Here's the punt. He does a good job setting up the wall and cuts back the other way. Let's see if we can pick up the clip. Comes down the wall, down the sideline. Right there, right there on Jody. Has a good call in the back. So what it'll do is move the ball back to the 41 of Georgia Southern. It's still a first down and 10. Gross, who's been at the controls all day long, makes the quick pitch out to Car Carl Miller, and Miller rambles across to the 40-yard line. That time they string out the whole field, our defense did a pretty good job, but they did get positive yardage. So if your offense is moving forward, it, it's working. Some of the goals the Montana coaching staff talked about before coming in here one of which was on the ground to hold this Georgia Southern team under 300 yards or in that neighborhood. But so far, it has not been that kind of day. First down, Dave. They're really running it well, running the clock, too. Thompson, who had that touchdown a few moments ago. And I guess that's the best way to describe this offense, the flex bone, as you can see Thompson there that time taking the pitch. And then on the touchdown, he's in the pass pattern. So, so many options to go with. It really is. And it's so fun to watch because they, they do it so well. You stand up here and watch it. You can tell if they're going to get yards off it or not. Some of the folks in Missoula may be interested to hear the attendance figure today. 10,421. Hey, look at this. Reverse pivot. Got a lead block. Oh, and a great play. Good try there for us. Stevie Collins trying to make the stop, but Thad Hughes will come up and along with Galen Lott, but I guess that's the quickness key coming in here is if you don't wrap up, you're not going to get a second chance. Good try that time, but again, I love to watch this offense. Reverse pivot, come down the line, pitch here. Now we're going to run outside, could have tackled him in the backfield, and then he gets positive yardage, first down. Collins, uh, just a junior, a fine linebacker. We'll be back next season. He'll keep it on the ground, and effort just bowls his way across to the 36. Now see what they did before. We, we got run, 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 and now's the chance to pop one over the middle again. Looks like we're going to be called for a defensive penalty. They'll pick up a first down on a penalty. I think it might have been a late hit, Dave. And that's the call against Montana. And not only is it as a first down, but the official will march off 15 yards. There again, some frustration coming out. Uh, very untypical of this team to have that kind of penalty on them. But when you're down 38-7, that, that could happen. You know, we talked about uh, the coaches, the Montana coaches' goal, holding this team in the neighborhood of 300 yards. 
Dave Guffey tells me 381 yards total offense right now. We're just 11 minutes into the third quarter. 200 of those yards on the ground. So the football moves down to the 18. Gross slips and falls. Brian Tripp nearly makes a play, and Gross throws it in to some big-time coverage intended for Carl Miller. That really shows, though, Dave, excellent athletic ability by their quarterback. Again, he should have been down on the ground. He picked himself up and almost made a big play. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Coming into this contest, some of the athletes and the coaches talked about trying to put heat on Gross. They felt he's the type of guy that will look once. If it's not there, he'll tuck it up and run, but has not been the case today. He has not been afraid to throw it at all. Second and ten. Gross will keep it himself. And again, you can see from here he did have positive yards. He actually could have pitched it, I think, too, there. Talk about an option team of this prowess. Don Reed talked about in the early 70s when he was at Oregon going up against an Oklahoma team, football team, that went on to win the national championship. Said it was different with that team because you knew they were going to line it up and run, period, where this team can throw the football. These look real good throwing, too. He only had one pass under thrown today. 61 yards on the ground so far for number 11. A little different alignment here, and they pitch out of it. Oh, he's going to be in. Oh. Now it was nearly a touchdown by Carl Miller. They're going to say he crossed the plane and it's been that kind of afternoon here in Georgia for the University of Montana Grizzlies. I'd like to take a look at that again, but they say Carl Miller crossed the plane before he fumbled the football. Watch the move he puts on Mike Rankin. Reverse pivot, comes inside, Dave, cuts back against the green. This is where I said he was in, and he took a little hit here and popped it up but they say he was in. That's a close call, Dave. Let's watch it again. Kevin Morris from Montana popped that football loose. We should be able to tell from this angle if he was in or out. Oh, real close. Can't see it from this angle, truly. Well, it doesn't matter now. It's in the books, 44 to 7. And make it 45 to 7. The Grizzlies have trailed in this one all the way, and it doesn't look good. In the land of Dixie, Montana trailing in the third quarter. We'll be back with more after this. Chandler! Chandler! Now we're set for kickoff here in the third quarter after the touchdown run, the 12-yarder by Carl Miller. Bob, you look down some of the scores. Georgia Southern winning games 31 to 10, 48 to 7, 28 nothing, 26 nothing, 35-14. In the playoffs, 52-36 over Villanova, 45-3 last week over Middle Tennessee State. And a lot of people were saying, is Georgia Southern really that good a football team? Well, my impressions of the University of Montana, they're a great football team, and they're trailing this Southern team 45-7. I was somewhat like that, Dave. Here again, you can see the touchdown. You can't really tell if he's in. We just got to assume the official is right. I was one of those, Dave, that wasn't sure how, why everyone was so confident, but they are just a great team. Defensively, they've, they've just totally shut down a very explosive Montana team. Bennett in a situation now where he knows the front is just going to put the ears back and run at full speed trying to stop him. It's complete to Jody Farmer. will pick up about four or five. Well, they love their football here in Georgia. Well, 10,000 people coming out on a day like this, uh, I'm pretty surprised. Of course, I'm sure there's a lot of Grizzlies that have to be wondering. Uh, oh, Grady Bennett just took a vicious hit uh, by number 95. That's Giff Smith. And Scrafford, Kirk Scrafford had a little chat with Giff Smith, was not pleased at all. The well, turnover will go to Georgia Southern. See if we can see it again, Dave. He took, like you said, a huge hit back to pass, checking with his receivers, and then just a big hit here. Ball pops out. Scrafford was, was real upset, but good clean play. Steve Busiletti with the fumble recovery. But Kirk Scrafford went over and... It was not a friendly chat he had with Giff Smith. And I would not 
like to face Mr. Scrafford from Billings head up. Well, with 10,000 fans here, I'd, I'd be a little careful, especially what's happening here. There's a big hit by uh, one of the Grizzlies. Well, I think the Grizzlies are in a situation now that they want to show some folks they did not make this journey just to sit back and be humiliated. That was Galen Lawton on that last hit, Dave. We'll see if, what uh, Coach Russell here does. Most coaches at this point, Dave, would shut it down and just run right at you. Of course, the situation now that they want to show some folks they did not make this journey just to sit back and be humiliated. That was Galen Lawton on that last hit, Dave. We'll see if, what uh, Coach Russell here does. Most coaches at this point, Dave, would shut it down and just run right at you. Of course, that's Georgia Southern's power is to run it right at you. And a mix-up in the backfield. Gross put the football out for the dive back, but only one problem. Nobody dove through, and he had to eat the football. I, you know, every game we've been at this year, Dave, and we've covered some other games, too, I've never seen the Grizzlies have this much, this much trouble with any defense or offense, for that matter. It's just a totally frustrating day on both sides. Third down and 10 for the Eagles. And Mike McGowan forces the pitch, but it may be too late. We've got a flag down as barrowing his way into the end zones, Alonzo McGee, but there is a flag down and it could be a clip. Well, you can see right there, Dave, when he turned the corner, I, it was a huge hole inside. They used a trips formation to the right and it came back away from it. But the touchdown will come back. Penalty is against Georgia Southern. Mike McGowan, watch number 27, makes the commitment. And then it's off to the races for Alonzo McGee. The execution was there, but uh, he did see the clip coming in, no doubt about it. Tim Houck was set up for the tackle and took the block in the back. And they'll haul it back 15 yards. Eight minutes to go here in the third quarter of action. Montana has trailed this one all the way. They're down 45 to 7 here in Statesboro, Georgia. Montana has been penalized 55 yards, six times for 55 yards. That's just Georgia Southern's third penalty. Boy, that quarterback. Gross has had a lot of time as he throws it incomplete in the end zone. He's a dandy though, Dave. He turned around, didn't panic. He, like I said, he hasn't really made a mistake all day. And it'll force the, well, they've sent the punter in, Terry Harvin. Now well, Harvin's the holder. So we'll check that. They will go for the field goal. It'll be just about a 41 yard shot. As Dallas, who's already hit one today, will try to make it two in the porn Georgia rain. And he misses it. So Montana comes up with a break, one of very few here. 45 to 7. We'll be back with more after this. We are back in Statesboro. Grady Bennett on second down will run the football and he will push it up across the 30 before he slides across. Good job that time by Grady Dave tucking it under. I think he's got a first down. It'll be real close. Grady hasn't quit yet. And, uh, you know, the Grizzlies, you know, it is out of reach. It looks like right now 45-7, but if they can drive and get a touchdown, they still can take a little pride in the game. Might want to point out that uh, to our viewers that this will be third down while we're away. Jody Farmer got the call and lost a yard. And so Bennett needs about a yard to pick up the first down. Bringing their backers up again real tight. I think they're going to send him inside. Jody, nice cut. And here's our first fight of the afternoon. Kirk Scrafford going at it with Troy Donahue. And it's rhubarb time in Georgia Southern. 
And Kirk Scrafford has been having words all afternoon with Mr. Donahue. And I think Kurt there, Dave, I don't know, he's feeling a lot of frustration, no doubt, but he threw the first punch that I saw come out of that, and you hate to see that happen. And they make a substitution, bringing Damon Gilbreth in for Kirk Scrafford, and if you've ever been around Kirk Scrafford, he's not the type of player to take a cheap shot or anything like that. As you mentioned, it's frustration. We had a little extracurricular going on both sides. Well, the crowd's going to get into it now. I'm not sure if he was ejected or just pulled out of the game. I didn't see a flag there. No, I, I don't believe he was. The officials let it go. And hopefully we'll see Big 63 back in there. Six minutes, 19 seconds to go in the third quarter. Montana picked up the first down, and Bennett looking for more, and he's rolling out, trying to find somebody open, and Shannon Kabanach nearly made the grab, but he threw into double coverage. Good job that time by Kabanach, Dave. He was well covered, two or three people there. Grady did a good job rolling out, trying to make something happen, and just threw it as hard as he could, and Kabanach tried to adjust. Oh, I might want to point out, Kirk Scrafford is back in the football game. Well, we saw Kirk get into it a couple series ago, too, so he's definitely feeling uh, real frustrated. Grady Bennett. Bob, these are not Grady Bennett numbers. 9 of 21 for 91 yards, one interception. It's been that kind of afternoon, though, for the entire Montana team. They get it off to Lorenzo Glenn. And traditionally, that's a play we've seen all season long that's been good for 10, 20, even 30 yards a pop, and it has not worked some of this that's, afternoon. Some of that's due to their quickness, Dave. They just adjust so fast. That time, their lineman read screen and turned around and made the tackle. They hustled back. They have a lot of speed. But I think on these numbers with Grady, only 91 yards passing, 9 of 21, that's their secondary. They're just playing great football. Well, at a time like this, it's when you find out what Montana Pride is all about. The Grizzlies trailing 45 to 7, complete to Matt Clark. But not enough for the first down. Are they going to call that incomplete? They called that incomplete? Grady was not very happy with that call. Well, one official called it complete. The other called it incomplete. I hope we can see this again because from our angle, it looked like he corralled the football. Oh, good call, Dave. That looked to me like he hit the ground. Well, he was definitely on the ground. Yeah, I think the but ball he can still make the grab. Farmer will punt it away. I think the ball skipped on that one. So Georgia Southern will operate from their own 18-yard line. And let me tell you, the friendlies here in the deep south are loving this one. After the 44-yard punt by Jody Farmer. <laughs> so with five minutes, 13 seconds to go in the third quarter, we're going to take this time out and return with more action right after this. Well, the Montana Grizzlies trying to just get through this one, trailing 45 to 7, and during the break, Georgia Southern put their entire second unit, second offensive unit in there. We'll try to get them all into you. Albert Huntley will take over at the quarterback position. The sophomore going to sneak in some valuable playing time. Good running straight ahead, Dave. Daryl Hopkins with the football. I think it's a class move by their coach to put in the other kids, to give them some time, give their backup quarterback some time, but also give the kids a chance to play that it worked so hard. Well, the Montana Grizzlies still stick with their first team defense. I'm sure they and only you can't brought blame enough. them for that. Yeah, I'm sure they only brought enough for one, but they need to play tough here, Dave. Try to stop them here and try to get a touchdown or two before the end of the game. 21-45 is a lot better than 45-7. More pushing and shoving going on. McGee with the carry again. And we have an injured player down, and that's Bill Brett, an offensive guard for Georgia Southern. 
Talking a little bit, Dave, about their team concept here at Georgia. Everybody's just uh, part of the team, no superstars really, and no extra notoriety for the kids. The coach uh, wants that, wants to really push it. He's got a, some slogans up that runs have to try harder, Very uh, makes his team very humble, at least in their own minds, and uh, makes them work really as a team every day. I was thinking we saw the coach in a couple of the local automobile commercials here in town. He's a popular individual. Very colorful guy. He was funny at the banquet last night uh, talking about why God gave him a bald head and said that he gives people with uh, not a lot of sense hair to cover theirs up. Well, I'll have to remember that one myself. 4.31 to go here and... Uh, sure what the situation is here you see the record of Erskine Russell seventh year here and we mentioned a, a couple of titles for him he's reported to be 60 years old Dave but he said he changed his age to 50 because he heard this was a young man's job to be a head coach so quite a character he was the defensive coordinator at Georgia when the Bulldogs won the national title with a guy by the name of uh, Herschel Walker I imagine his defense got overlooked just a bit by because number 34 was running the ball on the other side. Third down and a yard to go, and they'll keep it up the middle. Nice play that time by McGowan. Stepped in and really put a hit on, and then Rankin came in and helped out. Grizzlies going with some new faces in and out. Sean Brickley in the lineup. Defensive end. It's going to be close to a first down, Dave. I think they're going to measure here and see if they picked it up. <laughs> well, Georgia Southern starting to think about last year's national championship game in which they dropped one to Furman. You see uh, enough for the first down, and now they're beginning to think about repaying that favor. Dave, I'd be awfully surprised if this team gets beat by anybody this year. They just look incredibly good. If it, you know, to take the Grizzlies at 45-7 is unheard of. Four minutes, 15 seconds to go in this contest. Huntley appears to be changing at the line and makes the quick pitch. There's a good play by the defense, Dave. That time there was nothing, and Rankin came out and did a good job. That's exactly how you want a defense. It's stop the fullback. They're not on the pitch. You want your linebacker after the contain, see him shed the block. Nice play, and Hauk comes up and puts a little shot on him, too. Hauk and Rankin will miss calling those numbers next season. We've talked about that before, but two spots that are going to be tough to fill on this University of Montana football team. Hauk is headed to at least one bowl game. Here's our motion. Now they're going to lead and throw out of it. And Huntley, nowhere to go. He keeps running. But I got a feeling it's going to be all copper and white on this one. Grizzlies, I think Dave, are having a little bit of fun right now in terms of just getting back. They're, they haven't quit at all. And of course, not fun in terms of the score, but they haven't quit. This time they all come out and everybody wanted a piece of that one. I think McGowan's hurt, Dave. Oh, excuse me, Tripp is down. Brian Tripp, who came into this contest with a broken hand. He broke that last week, early in the contest. You see the big club, if you will, or it's actually a cast. But he'll be back next season. Brian is one tough individual, Dave. He's I've been so impressed with him this year. We knew he was good, but what a tough, hard-nosed, quick player. He was a Ram in high school, played for Loyola in Missoula. I want to point out to the basketball fans, University of Montana, the Grizzlies defeated Monmouth in their Forest Industries Classic, 56-53. to Boston University came back to defeat Eastern Tennessee State 78-73, so the Grizzlies will be playing tonight at Dahlberg in the championship game against Boston U. Gonna throw here. 
And it's complete. So even when Georgia Southern goes with the second team, they're still managing to find a few slots. Chuck McClurg with the reception, and it's enough for the first down. And the clock keeps clicking. You know, we talked, Bob, about this is the first time Georgia Southern and Montana have ever met up. I want to make sure they're pointed out. It's the first time they've met up on the gridiron. We're talking about the, the forced classic that the Grizzlies host. They played Georgia Southern on the hoops on the Maple Court a couple of years ago. Grizzlies came away with a victory in that one in 87. Boy, Coach Reed's got to be upset now. They're running right at him, picking up eight yards. Uh, that's something you don't want to have happen. Well, you have to point. wonder as well, Bob, the, the fatigue factor. The defense has been out there for a long time, and it's got to be frustrating for the troops. We mentioned earlier, there no way are these guys giving up, but uh, fatigue has to be setting in. The defense has been on the field a lot today, and that's something the coaches did not want to see. They wanted their offense on the field. It's been all eagle. Oh, beautiful play by Hauk. He came up and really stuffed that. Nice play. Well, Derek McGrady had a chance to meet Tim Houck up close and personal right there. Watch number 37. Search and destroy is his motto. Nice hustle coming in, taking him right at the knees. Tim, Big Sky Conference defensive, most valuable player for the second year in a row this season. Good camera work, David. I'd like to thank our production staff who we had to assemble from different corners of the globe out here. Did a, doing a good job today. Well, it was intended for McClurg, but incomplete, and that will send out the Georgia Southern punting crew. About 55 seconds to go here in the third quarter, 45 to 7. And folks in Big Sky Country, we were hoping to keep this one a little closer for you. But unfortunately, it has not turned out to be the day of the Grizzly. And a high-hanging punt. Cabanock calls for the fair catch, and then he just gets away from it. They've got every break, Dave, in the whole game, including the bounce there. Like I said, it, you almost think the big guy upstairs is wanting these guys to win when you get the, the block punts and the tip deflections and then the roll on the kicks. Uh, everything's going in their favor right now. Of course, Harvin with the, the punt, we talked earlier about how high he hangs the football. That's only the second time he's been on the field all day. Of course, I might mention he's been out there quite a bit because he holds for extra points and field goals, but it's only the second time he's punted. Grizzlies operating on their own 13. Bennett will fake it. He better get out of the end zone, and he throws it to Tony Rice. And Rice gets across the 20. And Bennett up close. You know, Dave, I'm not sure I want to, if we get a replay, I'm not sure that wasn't a reverse screen. They came with this normal screen look, and then it looked like they actually turned around and came back the other way with Rice. But uh, nice looking play, second down in a couple. Well, you can see the clock there in the corner of your screen. The Grizzlies are going to have to hurry if they want to get it off before the third quarter. Keep in mind, no one has scored. The crowd is counting it down in the third quarter because they have not allowed a team to score in the third quarter, and it appears that streak will hold true. We've got one quarter left, it looks like, in the University of Montana's football season this year. Montana trailing it on the road, 45-7. to seven. Well, the fourth quarter of action just underway. 210 minutes of scoreless football in the third quarter for this Georgia Southern football team. They've went 14 quarters without a team scoring on them in that third frame, and they hold that streak again today. Bennett goes to Lorenzo Glenn, and he's got breakaway speed, but that's been the case this afternoon as Taz Dixon makes the stop. Just one step or one catch, one pot little things that have happened all day long that have 
made the difference in this contest. Well, and early in the second half here, Dave, we've seen some frustration come out with drop passes, too. And there were some bad breaks in the first half. I mean, I'm not, Stephen F. Austin definitely is winning the game, but it could have been a little closer. I'd like to see the Grizzlies bear down here and get a touchdown in this quarter. I think they're going to try. Montana trying to battle Georgia Southern here, at least to get a touchdown. And a nice block made by Mike Trevathan to give Tony Rice the extra yard. And the Grizzlies, they're not walking back to the huddle. They're running back, setting it up. Of course, that's just the Don Reed character carrying through this football team. That was a good-looking play that time. And as you said, a beautiful comeback block by the wide receiver to spring him outside. Good protection by the front line. Bennett will give it off to Rice. Good uh, linebacker play and defensive end play there, Dave. I'm excited to see Rice the next three years of action. He is a dandy. I remember when Jody went down hurt, uh, everyone was very concerned, of course, but when Tony came in and played, he just did so well. Very, very good running back. Contest on the road against Northern Arizona towards the end of the season. Farmer injured his ankle, and they called on Rice. And he answered with three touchdowns in that game and was Big Sky Player of the Week. <laughs> Since that time, we've dubbed him Touchdown Tony because he's gathered in a, a group of six-pointers, but so far, not today. Bennett will go to Matt Clark, and Clark can't bring home the one-handed grab. Well, they could have threw a flag there for an unintentional hit, but really, he, he did let up and didn't put his shoulder into it. So, Dave, I'd like to thank our affiliates uh, in Montana, MTN, uh, with uh, KTVQ and Billings. Prove that tutoring of quarterback Raymond Gross has paid off. A nifty run to get the first down. Be able to see it here. As you said, Dave, a good, good copy of his uh, starting quarterback. Spins on the hit, keeps the feet going. First down. And that's one thing that you cannot coach is speed. There's a couple players injured. Look like they're both Southern athletes. Angel Eagles, number 34, Rufus Mazzini, number 5, Looks like uh, one of them's getting up. The other one's number 34, I believe, uh, one of the running backs, Dave. He Rufus Mazzini okay is 34, and then Albert Huntley, the quarterback, just shaking out the cobwebs. Now let's see if they'll go with their third-string quarterback because Huntley will have to come out for a play because of the injury. And it appears as if Derek McGrady will go in at quarterback number nine. So we're getting to see the whole stable of Georgia Southern quarterbacks. And they'll give it up the middle. Orlando Flicklin will pick up about a yard. It'll bring up second and ten. And is it still snowing out, Bob? I can't tell if it's snow or rain out there. Looks like snow to me, Dave. <laughs> it's like we're in Missoula here. Well, we understand that it's raining in Missoula. Take, take a look at the stats there. When it comes to uh, rushing yards, the total offense as well, I guess that's uh, where it's all been piled up. Clear domination, Dave, and they're continuing to run right at him. These kids, second deep kids, got to give them credit. They want to play, and they're coming hard. Ficklin just hit the hole. As we mentioned, it's the Montana first team defense, but they've been out there all afternoon facing this option. Now they'll work the clock now and try to run it down just over six minutes. I understand that that is the Tenth running back to carry the football today for Georgia Southern. They grow up wanting to run the flex bone here in the deep south, and they keep it on the ground again. Tim Houck will put the stop on Ficklin. And I guess right now the Grizzly defense, as we mentioned earlier, it's over at 45 to 15, but they want to keep them from scoring anymore. Absolutely. You don't want to let them get in here, especially the second team. It's a pride thing now, but 52 to 15 would sound even worse. Georgia Southern went into this contest feeling like the fourth quarter 
if it came down to that, was their frame. Of course, the Montana thoughts on that as far as their front line, their defensive line, was that they can send in seven, eight, even nine players in the rotation along the front and that they would be raring and ready to go in the fourth quarter, but it turned out not to be the case on this second Saturday in December. Well, as we talked, Dave, I think it was important to keep the game close, have the opportunity to win toward the end, and that's just not happened. Four minutes and 45 seconds to go in this season for the University of Montana. And the Grizzlies just trying to keep them from scoring right now as Albert Huntley back in the lineup. Picks up enough for the first down. Well, they could run the clock out on this possession, Dave. We'll have to see. The announcer's warning the folks to go home under extreme caution. They say there's ice on the bridges and roads. Uh, it's just not normal for the folks here to have snow and ice, and they do not know how to handle it, Dave. They're, they have no road cars with sanding. It just does not exist in Georgia. Well, if we can round up a four-wheel drive, maybe we can have you give them some pointers out there later on. <laughs> Boy, Southerns look like a four-wheel drive going right through the Montana defense today. And I guess as well, it's not really a situation that you can look down and say, well, Montana did this wrong or they did that wrong. Georgia Southern is a tough football team. I think that's just plain and simple. Yeah, they are incredible, Dave. Again, we talked about why all the confidence in here, and, and I can see it now. And the other thing I like is they are very class here, uh, not very bergocious about their team. They they take it all in stride. And it also helps that they are an independent. Now there's a play. There's a play I wouldn't have shown, Dave. I, I don't know if they had that on last week's films, but that's a nice-looking play, but I wouldn't have shown that to the team to, to get those films for next week because uh, we hadn't seen that look at all, but uh, not that it will make a difference for them next week, but I wouldn't have shown that here. Whitehead with the catch. I guess the coach is banking on the fact that uh, they cannot use any of the playoff films and hoping that uh, the other coaches abide by that not being able to scout playoff films. Good looking play. Forty five to fifteen three minutes to go. Georgia Southern will indeed advance on to the national championship game which will be played right here. And the pitch is to the number three quarterback Derek McGrady. And the Montana players felt like they had picked up the football. But it has not been a day of breaks for the Grizzlies. Might want to point out uh, some of the interesting things that we picked up on here, but it looked like Marcus Bowen had the football. Nice replay there. But uh, Georgia Southern will not stay here. They will have to stay in Savannah. The dorms are closed here at Georgia Southern because this is, as we mentioned earlier, this the Christmas break for Southern, as is the case in Missoula for the University of Montana. So they will stay in Savannah, as is the case for either Stephen F. Austin or Furman. Depending on, there's a loose football. And now if they blow that one dead, Dan Edwards came up with the football, but he was still right. So there's back-to-back -back fumbles. Of course, with 2.35 to go, it, it does not really matter, but uh, it looked like, I'm not sure if we'll have the replay, replay on that, but that was a live football. I was surprised too there. I thought it was a fumble, Dave, but they're just running the ball at the Grizzlies, trying to run the clock now. Maybe, Bob, uh, when we get a break here, we could talk about the travel itinerary. I know a lot of folks like to greet this Grizzly team uh, when they come in tomorrow afternoon. That certainly would help to let everybody in Missoula to know to do that, Dave, because the team would like to see that support when they get off the plane, I'm sure. Be loading up on the charter plane tomorrow afternoon and should arrive. Missoula International around 4.30 in that neighborhood. 
But this is a rainy day in December. The Grizzlies are not going to want to remember, at least for a couple days. But looking back on all the experiences they've enjoyed here, um, it's going to pay off down the road. You have to believe it. It's a new era in Montana football. And the pitch, now that is a live football. And Georgia Southern recovers it. And the clock still clicking at a minute 16. Now you can see the backup quarterback there not as good on the pitch as his starter. I guess you'd expect that. So, And, and again, Dave, I think you got to underscore the, the experience that the Grizzlies are getting by being here. If they could go it again, it would certainly help. All right. With a minute 16 to go in the game, we'll be back the final parts of this game right after this timeout. They're 45 to 15. And Brad Lebo, Montana's number two quarterback, will come in. He's from Lewiston, Idaho, a freshman, a good-looking quarterback when he's had the opportunity to get in and play. And I would imagine we'll see Lebo throw it up in the air here. Got a man open. Lebo goes to Lorenzo Glenn, and what a grab by Lorenzo to bring it down across the 40. Nice catch. Good job that time. I guess in comparing the two quarterbacks, you'd have to say Grady Bennett is more of a mobile type of quarterback, where Lebo has the strong arm and could probably go a little deeper than Bennett. Where I've been really impressed with Grady Davis is, is his maturity and his ability to, to come off the first and second receivers back to his third and fourth receivers and do an excellent job all year with that. I have to say he's one of the most improved players in the Big Sky Conference. Lebo, under pressure, spins, and still manages to stay up. I'm not sure if Brad was trying to prove something to me when I said he's not as mobile as Grady Bennett, but he gets it across just about to the midfield mark, and there's 36 seconds to go, and we'll take a timeout. The Grizzlies trailing at 45 to 15. It's in a minute to go, we understand, though, Furman is driving with the football. So it could be a repeat of last year's championship game between Furman and Georgia Southern. We know Georgia Southern will be there as Lebo trying to get it off and just throws it away on second and seven, and it stops the clock. David, another chance to thank a lot of people. Our director today, Skip Hill, for coming in from Chattanooga and putting on a fine telecast for us. And Kent Murray from the school here putting together a crew for us and all the guys that worked. It's just freezing out and they've done a great job. And to do all this stuff long distance is just hats off to those guys. And we got to thank a guy who drove all the way up from the Garden City, or I should say flew all the way up. Dave Syrak has helped us out as well today and made our job a whole lot easier. 45 to 15 is what it appears it's going to go down as a final. Lebo will have two more shots at it with 26 seconds to go. Goes to Kostecki. And the Sentinel graduate rambles down across the 36, and he's brought down by Gene Scott. Took a big hit when he went out of bounds. He bounced up like it didn't even touch him. I'm not Jim, Jim's playing in his last game, Dave, so you got to know that he's wanting to play and gets a reception here and takes it right up the field. Watch this hit. Big hit. I'm not sure if he him. took the hit or dished out the hit. Oh, yeah, big hit right there. Anytime you see that head go back and the body turn, you know you've been hit. 17 seconds for Lebo. It's all for cosmetic purposes now, but I'm sure he'd like to put it in the zone, and he's got the arm to do it if he has to. Glenn trying for his ninth catch of the day. So now with nine seconds, Lebo may just throw it up in the end zone. Now you want to go, like you said, Dave, go for the end zone, maybe get a break like Austin did or Georgia Southern did earlier. to 15. Grizzlies will head off tomorrow. They were hoping they could stay in the south for one more week, but the dream comes to an end against Georgia Southern. But a dream season it has been. Lebo can't pick up the football, and that's where it's going to end right there. 
as the bad snap to Brad Lebo, and it's in the history books now. The Montana Grizzlies in this season in Statesboro, Georgia.